Okay, our next movie is a moody, introspective drama named Solaris, directed by Steven Soderbergh and based on the 1972 film by the great Russian filmmaker Andrei Tarkovsky. It uses the devices of science fiction to explore the mystery of human identity. George Clooney stars as a psychiatrist who's summoned to a space station that is orbiting the mysterious planet Solaris and wakens to find his dead wife, Rhea, alive and beside him in bed. Does the planet fulfill his dreams? How are you here? How are you here? How do you mean? Where do you think you are? Where do you think you are right now? At home. Where is that? With you, where we live. Viola Davis plays one of the survivors on board the station who has seen this phenomenon before. She is not human. Try to understand that if you can understand anything. What about your visitor? The one that you're so ready to destroy without hesitation. Who is it? What is it? There's another level of subtlety when the wife questions her own existence. Not just the creation of the planet, she seems to have free will and to doubt her own reality. But am I really rare? I don't know anymore. All I see is you. That's Natasha McElone as Rhea. The movie Solaris has a space station. It takes place near another planet, but actually it's a meditation on the human individual and not really a space opera at all. Do we see other people as they are or do they exist for us only in our ideas about them? The planet can read the man's mind and reproduce his dead wife, but as he looks at the reproduction, he grows depressed because he questions how well he really knew her in the first place. The planet cannot supply what's not there in his mind. The movie is quiet and creepy, thoughtful, and very moving on the subject of how well we can ever really know one another. Yeah, I mean, it, it frustrated the hell out of me, but I really appreciated the skill behind this. And Steven Soderbergh, the way he directs it, there are moments with no music, and it's like a, you know, it's like 2001. It's a kind of a Kubrick thing with the white light, and you're wa waiting for something to happen, but it's not the kind of thrills and spills and scares where no. someone's jumping out from behind a corner. It's all up here. And halfway through it, I'm wondering, uh, is this Clooney's story or is this his wife's story? And which point of view are we getting here? And when it ends, I'm not sure if we're beginning at the end or ending at the beginning. But either way, it's very thoughtful and it's the kind of movie you have to discuss after. Yeah, it's kind of a chamber movie. And it's very faithful, yeah. uh, in spirit at least, to the Tarkovsky movie, which is much longer. And this movie, which is not very long, no, not seems long enough because it's fairly slow and meditative and inside in its uh, attitudes. But it's, it's, it's really, you do have to talk about it afterwards because she, having been evoked out of his mind by this planet, now knows that she's evoked uh, by his mind. Uh, and uh, yeah. she says, who am I really? And, and she, wants, she wants to kill herself. It's, it's fascinating that that even though she's this mirage, mm -hmm. she has self-consciousness. Well, and one of the characters at one point says, you know what, you're going to look for answers and they're not here. And you know what, that's what life and the end of life is yeah. all about.